We could imagine all kinds of stories about this photo featuring a couple arriving at their picnic spot in a small airplane. The reality may not be quite as exciting as imagination, but what is very real is the airplane pictured and advertised here, the Elon Air Coupe, with its story rooted in McPherson. We usually think of Wichita as the air manufacturing capital, but McPherson had three brief years of aircraft manufacturing glory from 1964 to 1967, when two former Beechcraft executives, John Allen and Lee Higdon, formed Elon Incorporated. The name of the company was derived from combining both of their surnames, Allen and Higdon. Talks got underway in late 1963, and in early 1964, the city sold land near the airport on the 81 bypass to Elon. It was hailed as the state's newest and seventh aircraft firm, joining the ranks of Beach, Boeing, Cessna, Helio, Lear, and Rawdon. Their concept was to make a newly designed model of the World War II era air coupe plane that Beechcraft had rejected. The air coupe had a brief post-war burst of popularity, billed as the Model T of airplanes, easy to learn to fly and affordable. But post-war Americans seemed more eager to buy new televisions and refrigerators than airplanes. Allen and Higdon envisioned a retooled air coupe that would be popular for flight training, touring, business, and personal use. In May of 1964, a hangar was built for manufacturing space and offices. Production started later that year, with the company rolling out the Elon II model, a two-seater, rudderless, tricycle gear sliding canopy plane with a cruise speed of 124 miles per hour. It was advertised as virtually spin-proof and easy to fly reaching your destination at half the time and half the cost of a family car. By 1966, Elon had built 100 planes at the McPherson plant. They employed 120 people, and they were selling the planes to business and leisure pilots for a base price of $7,975. They also rolled out a new prototype, the Elon X4A, a new four-seater pictured here. Judging from the person in the cockpit wearing a bow tie and a big smile, this may have been a publicity shot to generate interest in this new model that Elon hoped to put into production. There were plans to increase the production line from six planes per month to one a day and to add 200 more employees. According to the Flying Magazine, the A4 would cruise at 160 miles per hour and sell for $10,000. But trouble was on the horizon for Elon, and it came in the form of competition from Cessna's 150 model, pictured here on the production line at Struther Field in Winfield, Kansas. With the price almost $1,000 cheaper than the Elon, buyers were quick to notice the new Cessna bargain. Elon's business started to falter, and in 1967, Elon was sold to Mooney Airplane Company, and all operations were moved to Kerrville, Texas. But even in Texas, the Elons were short-lived, and manufacturing stopped completely in 1974. In addition to competition from the bigger companies, the mid-70s also saw vast increases in aircraft manufacturing liability. 
Big companies like Cessna could absorb the higher liability costs. The smaller ones could not. The Elon hangar in McPherson still stands today. It was purchased after Elon's departure by NCRA and served as the refinery's aircraft hangar for many years. It ceased its role as a plane hangar after the refinery sold its fleet of planes. The Elon airplanes are still around today too. With only 245 ever produced, they are aviation collector's items with a current average price of $30,000. In 1992, there was a fly-in of Aircoop and Elon Club members at the McPherson Airport. But other than museums, air collector shows, and fly-ins, a sighting of one of the McPherson-made planes is a rare occurrence. The state of Kansas features prominently in aviation and aircraft manufacturing history, and McPherson is proud to take credit for her brief contribution of the Elon story with this photo as a tribute and reminder of that. <laughs>